All right, let's jump into these last three examples here. Um, find the values <clears throat> of X and Y. So you want to interpret your picture and determine what angle relationships exist. So I see a set of vertical angles. So I can see that 2X plus 8 is equal to Y. Um, I could write that down and use that, but I have X and Y in one equation. So that means I need a second equation to solve, uh, which I could set up. I also have a, a linear pair here, and I have a second linear pair here. So this linear pair would, if I were to add y to x minus 5, set it equal to 180, that would be another x and y equation. So I could solve a system with those two. But if you look at this linear pair, see how they both only contain one variable. So I'm probably going to do this one first. So 2x plus 8 and x minus 5 are a linear pair, so linear pairs are supplementary. So let's work with that one. So 2x plus 8 plus x minus 5 equals 180. So we can solve for x, and then I could just plug in x for either one of these angles and figure out y. So combine like terms here. So we have a 3x uh, plus 3 equals 180. Um, I'm going to take away 3 from both sides. So that gives me 177 divide by 3. So that is probably a decimal. It is not. All right, x equals 59. Okay, x equals 59 is one value. So to find the value of y, I could do a couple things. These are vertical angles. So if I plugged 59 in here and did the math, that would give me y. These are a linear pair, so I could plug 59 in here and then find its supplement. Okay, either way. I might just go right here because that might be a little quicker to look at. So 59 minus 5. What is that, 54? Okay, so we could take um, 54 and figure out what this angle would be to get them to add to 180. So I could take 180 minus 54 and I get 126. So the value of y is 126. All right, let's move on and look at the next one. Number 12, uh, find the values of x and y. So again, we're working on how to set this up. So I would like you to pause this and try to jot down a few equations. Uh, if you can solve it, great, but uh, for right now, let's just write down some options. Okay, I'm going to write a few equations down. Um, I do have a linear pair, right, or not a linear pair, excuse me, vertical angles. So I could write down this relationship, 3x plus y equals 70. Okay, that's a true statement. I also have some linear pairs here. I've got, I'll, I'll write this first, the, the bottom one down first. I have 3x minus y equals 70. Okay, and I actually could solve a system of equations with those two. I'm also going to write this linear pair down. 3x, oh, hang on a second, I made a mistake there. Um, 3x minus y is not equal to 70. 3x minus y plus 70 is equal to 180. So let's fix this, make that a plus sign. Okay. So that wouldn't be quite as easy to do a system of equations. I could though. A linear pair here, so 3x plus y plus this one, 3x minus y equals 180. So you have some options. One thing though, if you look at this last equation and look at the y's, they are going to cancel each other out. So that's good news because now this equation would just have one variable. So this would just say 6x equals 180. Otherwise, I would have to do some sort of system, elimination, substitution to solve, which I could. Uh, but this makes it much quicker. So you want to divide that 6 into 180, and we get 30. 
So there's x. And then for y, you could do, I might come back to this setup or this first one here, 3x plus y equals 70. And now that I know x is 30, I could substitute in that if I want to. So that is 90 plus y equals 70. Take away 90. Negative 20. Now, it's okay to get negative 20 because if I were to take negative 20 and substitute it in, I still get a positive angle measure. So um, don't be thrown off by potentially getting a negative on your variable. Okay, last question. Uh, again, find the value or values of x. So interpret the diagram. What do you see and how can you set that up? So I see a linear pair, two angles along a line the relationship between a linear pair is they are supplementary. So I can do x squared plus 54 plus 6x plus 14 equals 180. All right, x squared, probably going to have to factor here, or quadratic formula, but we'll factor. Um, let's combine terms here. So, and I'm going to write this in standard form. So x squared, I'm going to bring the 6x next. Uh, 54 plus 14 is 68, that's 180. I cannot factor unless I have a zero here. So let's move the 180 over. So I have x squared plus 6x. I have 68 minus 180 is negative 112 equals zero. Okay, I need to factor. So let's get it set up. It's got to be x times x. Okay, factors of 112. Um, so as you, 112 is a larger number than you, most of the time we factor. So if you think about this 6, I'm looking for factors of 112 that when I add or subtract them, I get a 6. So I need the factors to be 6 numbers apart from each other, 6 units. So what I mean by that is if I start with 112 and divide by 2, I get 56. Well, 56 and 2 are really far apart. So um, you could just keep dividing numbers in, and maybe it'll just kind of show up. Or you could kind of jump ahead and divide larger numbers in. I don't know. Let's do 112. I don't believe a 3 will go. Let's try 4. 28. Um, let's try 6. Nope. 14 and 8. Okay, so looks like if I could get, if I did 14 minus 8, that gives me 6. So let's um, think about our signs. So I want the 6 to stay positive, so the larger of the two numbers should stay positive. So I want a positive 14, negative 8, that adds up to a positive 6, that multiplies up to a 112, negative 112. All right, zero product property, so split into two equations. X plus 14 equals zero. X minus eight equals zero. And then take away 14 from both sides, I get a negative 14 plus eight. Now let's test out do I get a negative angle? So if I look at my negative 14, when I square that, I get a positive number plus a positive will stay positive. If I plug in my negative 14 here, I've got six times negative 14 plus 14. Now that gives me a negative 70. So I'm gonna come through here, cross out my negative, and I'll probably just make sure if I plug in eight, do I stay positive? That would be a positive number plus a positive number. If I plug eight in, positive and positive. So the answer for this particular problem is just x equals eight. All right, hopefully you're getting a little more com comfortable with factoring um, and it's starting to be a little bit easier. So if you have any questions, uh, as always, just let me know.